Are they hungry? They definitely look hungry. So if you guys are ready, I'm Kyrie Peterson, and I'm about to enter the bite zone with the sea lamprey. Here we go. The Great Lakes have been invaded, and their fish are facing an inescapable attack that threatens to decimate their populations. Like aliens in a Hollywood horror film, these slime-covered parasitic predators have squirmed their way in and are on the hunt for blood. My mission is to find out whether or not these invaders have a taste for humans. And the only way to find out is to let myself be eaten alive by sea lamprey. To perform this nightmare of an experiment, I have traveled to Millersburg, Michigan, where I will be working in conjunction with the Great Lakes Fishery Commission and U.S. Geological Survey's jointly managed Hammond Bay Biological Station. These organizations are on the forefront of Great Lakes research, control of invasive species, and restoration of native fish. The Great Lakes are home to five different lamprey species, four native and one invasive. And as my luck would have it, you can clearly see that this invader is also the biggest. Sea lamprey originally entered the Great Lakes from the Atlantic Ocean through a series of man-made shipping canals in the mid-1800s. Taking advantage of these human-constructed waterways, they eventually invaded all five of the Great Lakes. Without any predators or population control at the time, sea lamprey numbers exploded, and by the early 1960s, the fishing industry was devastated, taking the yearly Great Lakes harvest from 15 million pounds of fish to a mere 300,000 pounds of fish. This is a perfect example of how destructive an invasive species can be. And while it's clear that they are a threat to fish, do they pose a threat to humans? It's a beautiful sunny morning, and it feels like the perfect day for an eaten alive episode here on the Brave Wilderness channel. Now before me is a 50 gallon aquarium filled with close to 100 sea lamprey. I know what you guys are all thinking, Coyote, hold on. Hold on a second. Are you telling me you're going to place your arms into this aquarium with these fish that will suction onto you, maybe shred your skin, and then drink your blood and bodily fluids? Yeah, guys, that's exactly what we want to try to figure out today. Now, what exactly is a sea lamprey? Is it an eel? Is it a fish? Is it an alien? Well, I can tell you this much. They're certainly alien looking, but no, they are not aliens. And while their body structure may really make them look like eels, they're not eels either. They are in fact fish, a primitive species of fish. The lineage of these creatures dates back 340 million years, which means that they were here before the time of dinosaurs and they survived beyond the dinosaurs. In fact, they have survived four extinction events. How crazy is that? Now, what makes them a primitive fish? That's a great question. They're not like other fishes. They don't have any bones in their body, but in fact, their structure is made out of cartilage. They don't have a swim bladder, they don't have any pairs of fins, and they don't even have proper jaws. They're considered parasitic predators. I may say perfectly designed parasitic predators, and they primarily feast upon fish. Now, the thing that's most unique about these primitive creatures is in fact their mouth structure. So let's crouch down here for a second and get down beneath the water surface and take a closer look. You'll see the way that they are suctioning to the glass. One of the most unique aspects is what's known as the sectorial disc. They don't actually have jaws, like I stated earlier, but they have the ability to suction onto different things. Glass is a perfect surface. They can also hold onto rocks, but when they're searching for their prey, which of course is fish, they're capable of suctioning on. And then let me paint you a really horrific story. This is almost like a Hollywood B-film. 
when they suction onto the side of the fish, their mouth is malleable. And within that malleable mouth, they have close to 150 cone-shaped needle-sharp teeth. Those teeth anchor into place, and then right in the center of their mouth is this razor-sharp rasping tongue. They rub that tongue over the scales, through them, into the skin, and eventually into the fish's flesh, where they then drink the blood and the bodily fluids. If you're a fish swimming around in the Great Lakes and you get hooked up to with a lamprey, you are alive when they begin to eat you. So you know, you gotta have a little bit of respect for these primitive creatures. These perfectly designed parasitic predators have taken a massive toll on the native fish species. In fact, during the lifetime of an individual lamprey, they can kill up to 40 pounds of fish. For every seven fish attacked by a sea lamprey, only a single one manages to survive. Their top sense is their ability to smell their prey. They don't have really great eyesight. In fact, they're usually most active at night. But when I place my arms down into the water, they're definitely gonna smell any scent coming off of my flesh. That's fair to say that I'm not a fish, but I'm certainly full of nice, warm, delicious blood. Are they hungry? They definitely look hungry. So if you guys are ready, I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the bite zone with the sea lamprey. Here we go. One, two, this is it, three. Oh, that water is cold. Oh, 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 one just rubbed right up against me. Oh boy, they are slimy. Now what I'm gonna try to do is keep my hands and arms in here. Oh, oh, they're squirming around. Wow, they are slimy. I'm gonna try to keep my arms in here for at least a minute and 30 seconds. Oh, they're going right towards my arms. Man, this brings some flashbacks of the leeches. When I did eat alive by leeches, they swam around my arms, brushing up against them just like this, eventually found me, suctioned on, and induced a bite. Now they're swimming back and forth. They definitely detect that I'm here. Ooh, that is a very, very eerie feeling. Slimy bodies rubbing up against me. I don't even want to look down, right? Now I'm just thinking about those sectorial discs lashing onto my arms, those teeth grappling, and then that raspy tongue cutting into my skin. But thus far, they're really just swimming around me. It's interesting because the warm blood in my body, I feel like would definitely be able to be detected. Then again, you have to think about the fact that fish are cold blooded, so maybe warm blood is not something that they would necessarily be after. All right, we're gonna up the ante on me being bitten. And I'm gonna actually push my arms into the piles of lamprey. <sighs> wow, that's crazy. That is a really strange feeling. All that slime. <sighs> oh, wow. Man, I feel like I've got my arms into the mouth of an alien right now. All slippery and slimy. I'm actually just moving my fingers around on the lamprey and they're just swimming right through my fingers. There's the opportunity for them to feast right here. Come on guys, I'm good, I'm telling you, this is good blood right here. Aren't you interested? This is the Coyote Peterson buffet line. Wow. At this point, my hands have been in here for close to two minutes. Absolutely no bite. I'm actually grabbing piles of lamprey and coupling them together. And all they are doing is swimming with slimy effort. Now these fish are surrounded in all sorts of rumors. When you're out there swimming in the Great Lakes, I know a lot of people have heard the rumor that possibly these things will latch on, inflict a suction, bite, and then suck out your insides. Based on putting my arms into this aquarium, I don't think that's gonna happen, guys. Unless you are a native fish species swimming around, you have absolutely nothing to fear, at least in my opinion at this point, from the sea lamprey. So I've got two theories as to why the lamprey have not turned me into a buffet line. The first is that these guys have an incredible sense of smell. Remember, they're pretty much swimming noses. Coyote Peterson doesn't smell like a fish. My second theory is that they primarily feast upon things that have cold blood. 
I have warm blood, so maybe it's possible that lamprey aren't interested in having a warm blooded meal at all. However, I think to really push this experiment to the next level, we're gonna need to induce a suction. What I wanna do is take a lamprey, adhere one to my arm, one to my stomach, and one to my neck. If that doesn't give them the opportunity to feast upon human blood, I don't know what will. Stay tuned, guys. I have a good feeling that part two to this experiment is going to be wildly entertaining. Now before we sit down and watch the sea lamprey enjoy an all-you-can-eat Coyote Peterson buffet, first it's important for you to understand how these alien-like invaders managed to create such a catastrophic stronghold on the Great Lakes ecosystem. These parasitic predators have a rather simple, yet well-structured life cycle. During the spawning phase, adults leave the lakes and migrate into streams build crescent-shaped rocky nests, lay eggs, and then die. After the eggs hatch, the larvae drift out of the nest and find areas of soft sediment in the river bottom. They burrow in and enjoy a hidden life for several years. Once ready, the larvae transform into parasites, complete with suction cup mouths, hooked teeth, and a voracious appetite. Then they swim to the lake and feast on fish for 12 to 18 months until they are ready to spawn. Females can lay nearly 100,000 eggs, so it's easy to understand how the invasion happened. Yet within this simple life structure, there's also a kink in the lamprey's invasive armor. More on that shortly, as it sounds like the dinner bell is ringing. Okay, this is part two of our Eaten Alive by Sea Lamprey experiment. And this is what we call inducing a suction. Now, for this part of the experiment to be effective, I'm actually gonna bring in the assistance of Dr. Aldeboa. He's gonna be the one actually administering the suction by placing a sea lamprey on three different spots of my body. My forearm, my stomach, and dare I say it, my neck. Now, to truly determine whether or not sea lamprey will feast upon the blood of humans, this is the best way to figure out whether or not I can become a buffet lion. If you're wondering whether or not I'm nervous, yeah, this is the part that definitely has my heart racing and my adrenaline pumping. They are going to suction on. I am going to feel the wrath of that raspy tongue, and there very well may be some blood. So at this point, I think if you guys are ready, it's time to let the feeding frenzy begin. Dr. Aldeboa, pick us out a very hungry sea lamprey. My forearm, my poor forearm, is ready. Sit back and relax, buddy. I almost feel like I'm about to give blood, and in a sense, I am. My own blood in the name of science to determine whether or not these creatures will feast upon humans. All right, that one jumped right out. That means he is ready. Okay. All right, what I'm going to do is place my forearm out like this. Stay. They are wily. Okay. okay, now what's going to happen is Mara is going to place it right on my forearm. You know, good solid piece of meat here. There is blood flow. And that mouth is... Oh, yeah, there we go, right there. Suction. Oh! It is on. Oh, yeah! Ah, 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 ah. Oh, wow. Wow, that is a powerful suction. The suction power in the mouth of this creature is about four times that of your normal home vacuum cleaner. What it's doing right now is just investigating around with those jawless lips. It's called a suctorial disc. Ooh, he's got a hold there. Now the mouth is rather malleable and in that mouth are around 150 cone shaped teeth. They use those teeth to lock into place. Now, typically, they're feasting upon fish. When they grab onto that fish, remember, fish is slimy. You've got to get good purchase if you're hoping to hold on and then eventually allowing that raspy tongue, which works almost like a boring drill, to work through the scales and the skin of the fish before they get down. Oh, wow, that is a crazy feeling. Oh, I can feel it definitely grinding away at my skin. <sighs> Oh, starting to notice a little bit of pain now at this point. Okay, so as they rip through the scales, ah, and the flesh of the fish, eventually an anticoagulant that they release from their saliva allows them to slurp down the blood and the bodily fluid. 
Oh wow, I can definitely feel something go into town there. Similar to the leeches, I can feel that tongue working around ah, on my skin and the suction, my goodness. I would say that's more powerful than four times a vacuum cleaner. It is pulling my skin up and into its mouth. Yowzers, okay, mm, that is an uncomfortable feeling. Now the difference between the lamprey and a leech is that the leech had these little jaws that were kind of in the shape of the Mercedes Benz logo that would slice into your body. Of course, that anticoagulant and the numbing agent didn't allow me to feel anything. I don't think that there's a numbing agent that's being involved in the grasp of the lamprey. Yeah, wow, it is really, ah! It is really, really digging in at this point. Ooh, yeah. Something's happening. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. ah, wow, that suction is unreal. Oh, <laughs> yep, something's happening. Something is definitely happening. Oh, it's grasping down tighter. Now, what's interesting about the teeth, ah, okay, it let go, it let go, so I wanna get a good look at yowzers. That, ah, oh, man, that just makes my whole body squirm. And when that thing pops off, it's like a really strong suction cup just coming off of my arm. Look at the way that the teeth curved into my skin and suction on. You can see where those jawless lips were locked in place. And right there is where all of those teeth were digging in. You can see the purple coloration in my skin. And honestly, just a little bit of blood seeping through right at that spot. Now, with my forearm, I have to think that that skin is pretty tough. There's a lot of muscle here and it's very solid. There's not necessarily, you know, like a fish. A fish's body has organs and soft spots and those lamprey are really gonna try to hone in on an area that they can easily dig into. My forearm, not exactly giving the best opportunity to dig in. I felt the effects, but I think it's time to step up to the next level i let one of these lamprey adhere to my stomach. All right, Mar, are you ready? I'm going to lift up my shirt and expose a nice, soft section of flesh. Very soft, good, squishy area. You ready? For one of these to be able to grab on and create suction. Okay, let's let him find his target. Oh, he's trying to suction onto me. Ah! Ugh! Hang on. He's going right through the glove. Oh, okay. Okay. Let him twist his head. He's good? I think he's, ah! Yeah! Ooh. That's pretty good. Whoa. He's oh! He's on. Oh yeah. That is definitely a oh, much different feeling than the forearm. Uh, the skin on my belly is much softer. And that suction is going, oh, going to town right now. I envy all those teeth. Ah, digging in, oh, the twist is tough. Now, when these creatures are out in the environment, ah, oh, look at that, it came off. Oh, that's good suction right there. Oh, oh wow, yeah, I could definitely feel the teeth digging in. And it almost feels like that tongue starting to rasp around. Oh, that makes your skin crawl. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Probably approaching the 60 second mark here with this creeper, true creepy slime monster suctioned on. Oh, okay, just embrace it. Now, it's not so much painful as it is like a pressure, a real strong suction, and just that really creepy feeling that, wow, is this thing actually, oh, 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 okay. just, I think it, let go. No, no, he just picked a different spot. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's an even better hold right there. I think he repositioned and said, ooh, you know what? This spot's even softer and maybe even tastier. Real question is, will it begin to have a feeding response and actually try to eat me? Remember, it's not going after my organs. It's not trying to burrow inside me. What they do is remove the skin and the flesh of the fish so that they can get down to the blood and the bodily fluids. Oh, okay, let go. Oh, oh. Uh, oh there's a lot of blood there. Oh. Okay, as I told you guys, there may be blood. There you have it. That is a pretty good suction. Teeth grinding the skin, tongue rasping away, almost like a razor sharp cheese grater. And you can see the battle wound there. A little bit of blood, not too bad. 
Ah, oh, it actually feels good to actually have the fish off of my skin at this point. Ow. I think what I learned from that bite is that it ultimately determined once my blood got into its mouth that perhaps this isn't a fish. This isn't something that I'm going to feast upon. But because they have the nickname oh, Vampire Fish, I think we need to go through with the third and ultimate suction. And we all know that vampire bite on to necks, which means that our next lamprey is going to take a good chomp right out of my neck. Lots of blood flow right there, really soft skin. I know you guys wanna see what's gonna happen. I think I'm ready. Dr. Aldeboa, find us an extra hungry sea lamprey. The buffet line just became an all you can eat buffet line. Let's place one on my neck. This is not easy, not easy to let these things adhere onto you. Pick me a real good, solid, slimy sucker, right, Mario. Got a good one. Oh, he this looks hungry. Ready. Okay, right okay, up here. Ready? Oh, <laughs> oh! Hang on to it. Okay, I got it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that is a good, good suction right there. Oh, let go. Let's go oh, for another spot. <laughs> oh, that is way more painful than the arm or the stomach. Oh. Ah, okay. Good? Yeah, he's, ah, suction on really good. I can feel that twisting sensation. Teeth grappling into place. Man, I feel like that's right on, right on a solid flow of blood right there. Oh, the vampire fish is truly living up to its name at this point. Ah, I'm gonna try to let it suction on for a full 60 seconds. twist is incredibly painful. Those needle sharp cone shaped teeth digging in. Close to 150 teeth in that mouth, remember. Oh yeah, no, I can feel the tongue grinding up against my skin. <laughs> oh, that makes my whole body squirm. Oh, that's incredible. Ah. Mm. You're doing good. How am I doing? Just relax. Oh, okay, I let go. Ah, no, no, it went for another bite. It went for another bite. Oh, yeah, he's got me good. You can feel every bit of those teeth grinding into the skin. Ah, ah, oh, wow. Yep, no, the tongue is definitely going to work. It is trying to figure out, is this something that I can eat? Oh, my goodness. Oh, ah, ah. Ah, that is about the most uncomfortable feeling I've felt in quite some time. Oh! <laughs> it's really latched on. Maybe, maybe. Oh! Oh! Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh! Ah! No, no, don't tug at it. Ooh! Ah! Oh! You want him off? Ah! Uh, just let me hang there. I want to make sure we get to the full 60 seconds. They don't call these things vampire fish for nothing, folks. Oh, there we go. Oh. That's a good one. Hey, don't get on me. Is there blood? Yep. I promise you guys there would be some blood. A lot of blood flows through your neck. And that sea lamprey was definitely locked in place. My goodness, oh man, it makes me lightheaded just to think about my blood and bodily fluids being sucked up by the vampire fish. Okay, so here's what I was able to determine at this point. Those teeth are sharp and that raspy tongue, yeah, it's like a cheese grater going at your skin. But in the end, I feel like every time the blood came to the surface and they got the taste of human in their mouths, they let go and said, you know what? This isn't a fish. This isn't what I naturally feast upon. So if you head out into the Great Lakes for a swim, I would definitely say you have no fear of being suctioned to, let alone being eaten alive by sea lamprey. Now, if you're a fish swimming around out there in the lakes, this 
is without question your worst nightmare. So the ongoing control efforts to keep the population of sea lamprey in check are incredibly important. Without this work being done, the lamprey will be decimating the fish populations. But again, like I said, when it comes to humans, if you're heading out into the lake for a swim, you have absolutely nothing to fear. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. I've got a few more in here that uh, probably could use a feed. Uh, I'm probably good. Camera guy? Yeah, go ahead, bring me one you over. One? Around the world, invasive species have detrimental effects on ecosystems. But no species has been more destructive to Great Lakes fish than sea lamprey. The fishery in these bodies of water was nearly destroyed. Yet the ongoing effort to control these invaders, led by the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, has been one of the most successful programs of its type in history. So while millions upon millions of eggs are laid each year, the life cycle has been identified and most importantly, intercepted. Thanks to the combination of environmentally safe lamprosides, strategic river barriers, mass trappings, and pheromone and alarm cue experimentation that may alter the course of spawning, the invasive sea lamprey population has been reduced nearly 90% in the Great Lakes. Now that is a success story. Sea lamprey control is an investment into the health of the environment. If you would like to learn more or have the desire to join the fight against sea lamprey, contact the Great Lakes Fishery Commission and help keep our freshwater systems free of blood-sucking aliens. Hey Coyote Pack, if you think being eaten alive by lamprey was intense, stay tuned as I set the dinner table for a tank full of piranha. And if you can't wait, join memberships right now and be the first to see what happens. Oh boy.